Welcome back, everyone, to Disc Golf Network's coverage of the Open at Belton. We are here for the third and final round. I'm Nathan Queen, again joined by Chandler Fry. Hello, everybody. We have Chris Dickerson building himself a pretty sizable lead of six strokes, but the wind has returned, making for some very tricky course conditions. Absolutely. We've got back to that 20 mile an hour wind range. Ricky Wysocki here is going to have to deal with a right to left wind to start the round rather than left to right. We got Calvin Heimberg and uh, no stranger to the wind. We have Emerson Keith, one of the best Texas players of all time. Yeah, here's our leaderboard. You see Chris Dickerson out here with that six stroke lead and four players right behind him in second. So very tight battle. Uh, for that second place spot and with the win today uh, definitely a chance to overtake Chris and hole one we see the opposite of what it was the first round on, uh, on that windy day we have a pretty strong right to left wind so players are going to be shooting way wide right and having the wind push it back towards the basket to give himself hopefully a short putt yeah, the misplay here is going to be getting it too flat. I doubt we'll see much of that. All these players have enough power to throw straight hyzer here or letting the wind grab your disc too much. Get your nose angle too high. It will pick it up and carry it much further left than you'd like. And here we have Chris Dickerson stepping up. You can see the wind ripping those flags right now. Being first on the card is somewhat of a nervy shot. You, you are the wind dummy. So every other player on the card is watching Chris right now to see what his disc does. Yeah, these players definitely have an idea of what's going to happen, but that first throw of the day is always kind of a, a good thing to watch, especially if you get it off right for Chris here. This looks to be going a little left. And it has gone too far left. He ends up OB on the left side. He's going to have a, a long circle two look to save his par directly into a head. Not the start he was looking for, that's for sure. Ricky all smiles as he steps up. Got to say I'm a fan of the purple. I am as well. A little wider than Chris's. 71 miles per hour out of his hand at disc speed. That's a, that's a fast one. And a great shot. He gets it inside the circle. He'll have that tailwind putt that you're looking for. Have a chance for his birdie. I'm loving Calvin's hair. It's looking great. A little crazy, but it looks good. Gonna see if he can get a little closer than Ricky here. I'm it's liking a, this. It is looking to move left faster than Ricky's is, but he comes up a bit short. He's gonna be, looks like in circle two. Yeah, edge of circle one, it's about 40 feet. Emerson, Keith. Emerson Keith, perhaps the pound for pound farthest throwing player on tour at the moment. The guy hooks the disc. And as you said, from Texas, knows a lot about this wind. Should be able to play it pretty well. A little long right. He does have that, that slight tailwind putt. He'll yeah. have a chance. He may have a little bit of branch trouble there, have a lower ceiling than you need with that tailwind. So Chris, for a good par save here. Oh. Oh, and gives it a good bid, has the right height, fades just a bit too late. And Calvin, Ricky, and Everson all see that, and they are just, they're already licking their chops. They smell the blood in the water. They want to get these putts. Calvin didn't. Yeah, he's got a tricky right to left there. Yeah. Uh, if he doesn't put the ante on it like he did, it's very possible his putter could lift up and be over there where Chris was at a second ago. Yeah, you have to hit that putt perfectly for it to go in, similar to Emerson's putt. And also Texas wind, even if you have a tailwind or a headwind, there's no guarantee that it's gonna do what you think it's gonna do, so. Yeah, just slightly off on the angle that you release your putter and it could do the opposite of what you expect. 
And Ricky starting off hot, getting two strokes on Chris on the first hole. He he definitely wasn't expecting that, but he is happy to get it. Yeah, six down to four. And with 17 holes to play. Man, look at those leaves. The flag, even this putt, even though it's only about 15, 14 feet, you really got to think about it because the disc can get away from you pretty fast. You can see that was a little high left, but it's stuck in the basket. Even when you're holding the disc out in front of you, the wind is trying to grab it out of your hand. Yeah, it's always unnerving when you can feel the disc move while you're just standing there not doing anything. Yeah. Chris has the tailwind here, so this is less nervy than Emerson's putt. He's able to collect that bogey. Uh, this hole, not really far under par today. Um, only 0 0.17 under par. I'd say in general, the wind makes this course almost like five, four strokes harder than a, a calm day. It's pretty insane. But the card kind of going around what the, the rest of the field was averaging with an even uh, sheet, one bogey and one birdie and two pars. And we're on to hole two. Really the main thing is just get through the trees right in front of you, get under them, don't hit them because that'll bring the par, perhaps bogey into play. Get out in the open and then pitch up to the basket that is on a down slope. Don't throw it too far, because you might get a roll away or uh, perhaps find the river. That'd be a horrible shot. But uh, just get yourself in the, out in the open and give yourself a chance. Yeah, easiest hole on the course here. Oh, right there at it all three days. It is the easiest today. One you really want to get, especially after that first hole averaging right around par. If you didn't get the birdie there, you definitely feel like you need to get the birdie here to get your round started yeah you can see that down slope on the green you can't see the basket so it's kind of scary you might hit a root might hit a rock or a stick and, and roll but we shall see ricky ripping on an enforcer i know a lot of dynamic players were leaning on that disc in this wind Ooh. Oh, and just catches that low ceiling. He gets a good little roll away from that tree. He'll still have a chance to get up and down, but it got way more difficult. And we'll be seeing a nice little step out sidearm from him on his second shot. And this is what you want to do. A little turn, a little too much turn actually, but still in great position. Yeah, with the right to left win that we got there. Uh, as soon as that disc turned over and showed the top flight plate to that wind, it drug it over to the right side. Very low. Similar to Calvin's flight, but just a lot shorter. Didn't have the height or the glide. All right, and this hole, Chris needs to bounce back. He needs to show them that he's here to play. bit too much hyzer on that release and it lifted up into those branches but a very nice kick mm -hmm. he uh now has the best driver of the group gonna try to bounce back from that bogey on hole one i think that uh, plastic bag on the right side distracted him a little bit luckily that tree saw fit to stop it from moving around yeah, ricky ripping on something pretty overstable perhaps a felon really weird skip he skipped down the hill He'll have about a 45-footer for a birdie. Yeah, that's a, a better place to be than a 45-footer at the top of the hill. He'll have a chance to run that one now. Very true. Good touch forehand from Emerson. I hope that sits down. Almost dunks it. And he's going to be down there a little further away than Ricky on off to the left side. Might still have a clean look, though. But dealing with a little bit of off-camera... Um, for his disc angle whenever it lands. Mm -hmm. and this is moving a little bit to the right for Chris, but it sits down well. He's inside the circle, and we'll have a birdie chance. Good speed. Good approach. Oh, Calvin really pushed Ooh. further up there off the tee than I thought. That's fine. He'll like that. 
A little long right. A little bit of a tester with the wind, but fortunately the hill blocks the majority of the wind that's coming through. And this is definitely in Ricky range. It's a cool visual. The gallery up top mm -hmm. looking down. He gave it the height. The accuracy was just a bit off, just a little left. And uh, same for em Emerson there, just a little bit left. It's pretty uphill here, so tough to get the right trajectory on there. Chris able to connect for his birdie, get his bounce back stat up just a little bit. It's fun to see players whose game was built around certain conditions. Like with a lot of Texas players like Emerson or Luke Humphreys, you can see that their putt and their throw is just built around wind. It's yeah. just that soft spin that you want to, to – you don't want to force it into the wind. You want to just kind of guide it in there. Let the disc do what it knows, how, knows what to do. Ricky not happy with that, with that par. Gives a stroke back to, get, to Dickerson. And Dickerson gets back to a five-stroke lead. Yeah, as the easiest hole on the course here. Uh, surprising to see. Not a, honestly, not a star frame from the lead card here. That's what you expect to see. Yep. And uh, no bogeys, but just two birdies on the card. Chris with his bounce back. Yeah, half the field birdied that hole, so it makes sense that two of the lead card birdied as well. This hole's tough. In this wind, we have a headwind coming up off the hill, forcing your disc to move a little bit more left or right, whichever angle you put it on. Um, you want to avoid hitting early. Um, that's definitely a problem. If you don't make the gap and throw it low, you could skittle into the OB on the hillside. But if you make it past the hill, just navigate through the trees, have it finish right, and hopefully give yourself a putt. Uh, it's not too windy of a green. There's a, there is the, the Leon River on the left side that you got to contend with, but... Uh, Overall, just throw a flex forehand out there and hope for the best. Yeah, definitely a tough green to access. The, the headwind coming off today really makes it uh, more of a nose angle. Oh, I, j I jinxed Calvin. Sorry, Calvin. I think that stayed in bounds up top. I think it did. He'll have a chance to save his par. Uh, but that wind here with the, with the hole being downhill... You really want to make sure you don't get the nose up going into that headwind. Once you get through that gap, if the nose is up, it's just going to lift your disc into the branches and most likely drop you into that OB. Really got to get it over and nose down. And even you could throw what you think is a good shot and hit a tree and bounce left. So, And this, this looks, looks great. Great. <laughs> and it is great. That should be an easy tap in birdie for Chris. Great shot from Chris. Ricky looking to do the same. He's going to try to follow that same line, but he gets it just a bit low and ends up catching that double tree right around where the Mando's at, Just, or excuse me, the drop zone is at, just a little bit past. Yeah, looking, looking about 55, 60 feet. Here we have Emerson. This looks to be traveling a bit right, hits a tree. And you saw that lift. He had the nose up just a little bit. The wind got underneath it and picked it up. He'll be looking to card a par at best unless he has a throw in. Tough shot here for Calvin. Nice reaction off the tree. Very close to hitting the intended line. He gets up there into circle two and he'll have a chance for a par save. Just gonna hit the hill and skittle down to the basket. That's gotta stop. That is fine. Yeah, nice little touch shot from Emerson using the land to his advantage. And Ricky is always looking to make putts. No matter where he is, no matter what's in his uh, stance. He's still online. The guy's got skills. And just a bit high for par. Doesn't feel good, but it, it was online. Yeah. Dang. 
Good line from Calvin, and then there is a bit of wind down there, so that could have been in a norm, on a normal day right in the middle of the heart of the chains, but um, it's a good sign that he's on point. Yeah, the whole averaging pretty much at par. Not many birdies, 23% of the field, so tough to get the birdie on there. Yeah, those trees make it difficult to get down there. Hole four had some teeth during this round. We had a wind coming down the fairway. Um, it was terrifying. We got trees on the right, trees on the left. There is the Leon River on the left side. If you do connect with the tree and bounce left, you could be finding yourself in a horrible position. Um, ultimately, you just want to either pitch up to this gate right here or blast a shot through and perhaps give yourself a long eagle putt. But uh, I think with this win, players are mostly looking just to play safe and get a par. So I would agree with you, but half of the field was able to card the birdie on this well, hole today. Um, I, I was talking through my experiences. <laughs> there are a lot of bogeys and six players carded a double bogey or worse. So definitely that potential for a high number. Yeah, I guess on my card, on the chase card, we had three birdies and one six, and you can probably guess who the six was. So, <laughs> Chris going to disc down here, and let's go just a bit oh. early. He's hit, caught the left side and does go out of bounds. He is, uh, he's opening, I wouldn't say opening the door, but he's definitely opening a couple windows in the, to let, letting the draft in. And, and Ricky has thrown it through that window. I love Going to try to pitch up to the door now. That's his safe play. I love that. Just a Heiser forehand skip through the gap. And Emerson looking to match Ricky. Gets a little bit over on this, but gets mm. pretty well through. That's he'll an have awkward spot. Yeah, he's in a weird spot. He'll have some type of way to manufacture a shot to the green. And Calvin's got a Halo Destroyer in his hands. That means what, Nathan? Aggressiveness. He yes. is going for this gap, trying to get out. It is reachable. This is a and good that move. Is, that is going to get out. Oh, good on edge. Oh, it's fading oh. back and gets a skip. That is. That's the best drive this hole's going to see during this round. Yeah, we're in a headwind right here also, which is just going to want to slow his disc down, but he does not care. Wow, the commitment on that shot is unbelievable. That's beautiful. Wow. Just a gorgeous release there. Gets it nice and flat, starts to drift off to the right, skips up <laughs> into the turtle claw. I love how nonchalant he is about that amazing shot. <laughs> it's like, thanks, guys. It's a normal day on the course. Chris wishing he felt that ease that Calvin feels right now on this hole. He's down. Oh, my gosh. Might have lost a disc trying to pitch back out just to have a chance to save a bogey now. Mm -hmm. That is brutal. It's almost like a double penalty when you go out of bounds down there. Actually is a double penalty. Yeah, when you go out absolutely. Uh, he does well. He should be able to collect his bogey from there, but still kind of a nervy putt. Yeah. And Emerson able to step out, wow. and he will collect his birdie. That was a nice upshot right there. Showing us his flexibility, Ricky giving it. Let's see if Calvin's disc makes Ricky want to run it. He's still laying it up there. <laughs> Even for Ricky, that would be a crazy run. And Calvin for the eagle. There it is. Fly, eagle, fly. That's the first one we've seen this this weekend, at least on feature card or lead card, excuse me. So fantastic shot to get out of the gap there. And the only eagle on the day, not, not surprisingly. So Calvin is going to be gaining at least three strokes on Chris here. He's able to connect for his bogey putt, which is best case scenario from where he went out of bounds at after the tee. We got ourselves a game. Chris leaving a, quite a few strokes out there, and Calvin and Ricky right now 
taking advantage. We got some gamers out here. Yeah, so four stroke lead, what was once a six stroke lead is now down to four. Calvin getting the eagle and two birdies and a bogey. So quite the quite the scoring separation on that hole. Most people just see a disc. At Discraft, we see over 40 years of innovation. Driven by passion. Consistency that inspires talent. Built on a foundation. Designed for success. Over four decades of experience. Behind your first throw. Bringing us into hole five, 788 feet. Should have a strong left to right wind, maybe a little bit of tail in that. Uh, most likely we'll see some stable hyzers through this small gap on the right side, or it's possible we'll see a big Anheuser flex uh, if somebody is confident with their, confident enough to go high and have it come back without going OB right side. I think in this win, the big Anheuser Flex might be one of the safer plays, honestly. Because the right hand play is pretty nervy. There's a lot more to hit. Yeah, we could also see some forehands. It's possible to get your forehand through the smaller gap on the left side and get a big flare off to the right, leaving the right handed backhand more open for the approach. The closer you get, the better, though. As you see, this lion's eye green, very difficult to get an easy putt at if you're anywhere at the bottom very nerve-wracking absolutely calvin ripping on another i believe halo destroyer here and that looks great 73 mile per hour disc speed that is elite level speed out of the hand traveling a little left he'll have a low oh he'll have a pretty easy upside to the basket honestly that's so far Ricky looking like he's going to go with that same line. It's a little turn, but it's a stable disc. That yeah, was perfect. This may be going farther than Calvin's, but ends up about the same spot, actually just a bit shorter. And here we can see Emerson showcase his distance. He's half of a Ricky in size, but he can throw just as far. This looks like this may be that big Anheuser to the left side. Oh, inside. I don't think it got the turn he wanted. It's still getting some good distance. Oh yeah, that's great. That's farther than both Calvin and Ricky down the left side. Great shot from, from Emerson. Yeah, that's not a line you see very often. We saw Paul try to take, Paul Omen try to take that line during the second round. Yeah, good old Sloman Omen. This is right. Hopefully it does not find the OB. Oh, and he is very fortunate wow. to kick back out into the inbounds area there. Uh, he'll still have a chance yeah. to get a par now. Chris has got to tighten it up if he wants to win this tournament. And that's a very tight shot right there. Lots of distance on it. Wow. Great recovery shot to get up close and he'll have a fairly easy up shot to try to stay up on top of that green yep ricky and calvin both know the situation they have to get a birdie on this hole Ooh, a lot of skip on that one wasn't as far as ricky was hoping he was probably trying to hit that green and have the disc stopped by the basket but unfortunately it wasn't long enough This is pushed longer oh, no. and catches just a little bit of that green and rolls away. He's going to have that very scary lifting right to left. In calm conditions, this green is hard to approach. In windy conditions, it's, it's terrifying. Go in. <laughs> yeah, you'll, you saw that was looking great. And as soon as it started to finish on a hyzer, the wind just carried it all the way out to circle's edge. 
nasty headwind putt from there. Yeah, that's uh, I mean, that's a layup putt. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Final round though, you might want to, might want to go for that. I don't know. Chris shows good touch there. He'll have a pretty easy opportunity for his par. Ricky has a tailwind. This is a little more runnable. Oh, he definitely wanted that one. It dropped a little bit faster than he was expecting. Let's see Emerson, Emerson does not look like he's laying up. A little spin chance, a little too high. He'll have about a 20, 25-foot comebacker. Calvin now with the opportunity. Seems like he may have caught a little lull. That flag was moving a little softer than it has been. You got to take advantage of oh, those. Oh, it's back. It's back. And laying it up. Yeah. He saw the other two players have difficulties with it. Very smart move right there. Wow. Wow. What a comeback putt from Ricky. After having a tailwind putt. Mm. Has a shorter headwind putt, but still just as difficult. That was a statement putt right there. He's just saying, hey, I'm here to play, guys. And uh, Emerson putting through the eyelashes. Uh, eyelashes are no problem. <laughs> He's trimmed them before he'll trim them again. <laughs> and Dickerson with a tailwind putt, but still somewhat of a tester. You still got to think about it. You can't just put it in there. But he's probably feeling lucky after his drive that he did not lose a stroke on this hole. Yeah, this hole averaging just a bit over par today. Not by much, but that wind definitely causing some havoc on this putting green. Yeah, Calvin and Ricky were both looking for that birdie, but that approach, as I said, is just so demanding. You gotta, you gotta be perfect on it. So yeah, par frame for the for the lead card on hole five. Which brings us up to hole six. What was the wind doing on this? I, I can't remember. On six, you're going to have a, kind of a headwind with some right to left. Okay, that sounds right. Um, that new play now that the Mando tree is not there this year. You've got <laughs> yeah. the low side on the right to get a big flare up. I think it should be good for that shot with this right to left wind to get that flare to push towards the basket. Anything on the left, you're gonna have a hard time to get it moving back right. Mm -hmm. A lot of options on this hole, but the wind kind of dictates what you're gonna do off the tee pad. So we'll see what the players decide. Calvin looking to Possibly go right down the middle. Slash right side skip shot, as Nathan was talking about, connects with the tree. It was a little bit too high. Yeah, it looks like Ricky is going to go with that right side as well. Also, a little too high, oh, but wow. gets through those branches. Turned over a little bit. He's not going to like that one. No, that's a tailwind look, but a little far to really feel comfortable giving it a bid when you're going to have a headwind coming back. Ooh, nice and low. I like this shot. If it gets on edge, it could get a good skip. It got a good skip right into that bushy tree there unfortunately uh did look like it was a good line if it did miss that tree it would have been about 20 feet left of the basket and this looks a little flat yeah that wind making this one difficult today hard mm -hmm. to access yeah calvin with a tricky upshot we're gonna see a low skip shot down that gap to the on the right And he does it perfectly. Unfortunate little roll away, but he's still right there for the par. Nothing to really talk about there. Nice little upshot from Chris and Emerson from about five feet out of circle two, I'm guessing. Oh, he's giving this a nice little bid. <laughs> oh, oh, man. No. oh, an inch higher. That was absolute perfect perfection. So it's so cool to me how he can get 
how he's so consistent with the line that he has, yeah. with the form that he has as well. Yeah, and his knowledge of the wind, to be able to just put out the, the put the spin on the disc out there and kind of know what it's going to do, you know? That's impressive yeah. stuff. So it looks like we're going to have four pars, which is most likely what a lot of cards did today. There were only six birdies on this hole. That's surprising. I, I, I'd expect a lot more. Yeah, I think just the, the head right to left wind at this 400-foot distance with lots of trees guarding that right side just makes it a little more difficult to get there. It didn't average far over par, so not many bogeys, but uh, a few less birdies. Yeah. On to hole seven, which in my opinion is the hardest hole in the course. <laughs> it is not, actually, yeah, but it is it's impossible to reach for me. It is another of one of those holes I was going to say, similar to six, where you just kind of want to get your par, 476 feet. Um, it's a long way to go without having every bit of space that you want you don't have room to make a flex shot really you have to do a hyzer stand up you've got the wind pushing right to left so if you stand it up just a bit too much and turn it over it's going to get packed down by the wind if you don't stand it up enough it's going to get carried away off to the left side you yeah. do have that fenced in area that's ob and right side OB as well. The right you know, side is OB yeah. as well, yeah. So very difficult hole. Uh, On paper, this hole looks pretty straightforward and easy, but once you step up to that, that tee and you feel that ripping wind coming at you, you're not feeling like it's easy. <laughs> Calvin ripping on something. Destroyer. Making it look easy. Oh, man. Yep. Okay. So that's how you do it. You just uh, chuck your... Overstable distance driver straight into a 40 mile per hour headwind. This poor, like, it was more like 25, but very impressive shot. Insane power displayed there by Calvin. Good height. Ricky getting a similar shot off, but it's drifting a little further off to the right. Get some skips. Gets a nice finish, but that's about circle two's edge over there, 70 feet or so. He did make that putt second round when I was playing with him, so hopefully we'll see a good run from him. Emerson out nice and low, but pulls it wide. Come on back, come on back. Spectator scatters. Oh, did not make it back in bounds. Doesn't quite make it in bounds. Thank you to the spectators for moving so quickly. I do believe they all got out of the way. We got backwards hat, Chris Dickerson. You know what that means? Time to turn it on. Oh, yeah. He is serious now. He's done bleeding strokes. He's about to gain some, or get some strokes. I wouldn't even say he's really bleeding. He had a big enough lead yeah. that what he's done so far is still acceptable, but it is time to turn it around, and as he has shown with his hat. That was a very conservative play. He was just looking to throw it in bounds and get the power to move on to hole eight. Smart. Yeah. Emerson trying to get close so he can get an easy bogey look after going OB off the, the off of the tee. I'm surprised by Chris's play. I think with in today's day and age, um, you got to be aggressive. You got to with Ricky ch char charging, Calvin charging. You got to show the guys that you're still here to play and not here to get pars. So like you, you know, Ricky's gonna run this. I'll, uh, I'll be the antithesis All of right. that and okay. say that I like his play, knowing Ricky is going to run this in this wind True. and could easily take a bogey after running it with the, with the sloped green. So You make a solid point there, sir. But Ricky's always <laughs> going to make his comeback putt anyway. That was, that was fantastic. <laughs> wow. Uh, what, what a putt. It's easy to run those circle two uh, looks when you know you're going to make the comeback. So. It's so fun to watch. Yeah. You just, you know, you know the feeling when you are, I know the feeling personally of missing that putt and having that comebacker. Mm -hmm. I don't know the feeling of that I'm always going to make it like Ricky does. Yeah. So it's just very cool to watch, see him collect himself, putt oh. like he knows how to. Calvin immediately getting a lift out of his hand. Every putt Ricky steps up to, he thinks he's going to make, which is the, one of the reasons why he's the best putter, one of the best putters in the world. Good comebacker from Calvin there. Yeah, making 
on a smaller scale doing the same thing as Ricky there trying to get the birdie ending up with the par Emerson tapping in the par or bogey I apologize and Chris tapping in the par yeah not too far playing about 1.8 over par there were actually more birdies on this hole than hole six today uh, surprises me a little bit, but we do have some big arms out here that just like to open up. Yeah. And when you say 1.8, you mean 0.18, correct? Yes. All right. Point it wasn't that hard. <laughs> uh, hole eight. Uh, with the wind today and during this round, it was actually playing a lot easier than the other two rounds. Um, the play, if you want that birdie, is to go over the top, kind of test the trees on the right over the river, and have the disc swing back towards the basket. The trees on the left, if you put it out, if you early release can send your disc into the out of bounds realm but uh another play that if you want to get, to get the par is to shoot low and have it skip towards the basket but i think most of the players on this card are going to be looking for that too yeah that high right plate today is good with the tailwind that we have you just got to get it high enough and kind of keep that nose angle up now so it can get pushed uh towards the green Got Calvin going high right. I think a little wider would have done him better. If that stays in bounds. He's going to be happy. Yeah, I think he's made it past okay. that OB cart path. It does kind of trickle further left for the OB, so he'll be in bounds and have a circle two or circles two's edge look. And here's that lower skip play that I was talking about. Ricky looks to have perfected it. Oh, oh counter that skip. skip. That was a bad skip. Oh, he does stay in bounds, though. Jeez. The ground does start to slope down towards the river over on that side. Uh, very scary if you catch that ground. Well, that is high. Chris going back to the high right. That looked a little bit too high. It is a four-claw force, though, so nice and stable. It cuts down nicely and just outside circle one. So good. Out of his hand, that did not look great. But it was. Emerson going with a rive here. I've been thinking that about Chris's shots more and more as we've watched. You're like, oh, that doesn't quite look right, but then it's perfect. So this game's just—he's just built different. He's I guess he's on it. Yeah, yeah, he knows what he's doing and he's executing. This looks nice. A little short. Emerson hanging it out wide. Maybe edge of circle two. So close. Yeah, again, having it right on line, just not quite the right distance on that one. Yeah, just needed a bit more power, a bit more height. Calvin probably 58. Whoo! Oh, and he cans it low left side. Let's go a little, little hand clap and run to the basket. That was an impressive putt with that That's right to left wind. Wow. Great birdie putt. This really feels like an eagle-ish type of play. It's very difficult to reach this one. That could just be... Yeah. What a great putt. That could just me being left-handed, and uh, I'm playing this one for three, but. Yeah, this is this is not the best hole for left-handed players. That's for sure. Dickerson from about 40 feet. Chris to not be big putted. Oh, sit. And uh, just a bit soft. Yeah. Good, good safe bid though. There's always that, there is that risk of rollaways if you do rim off the basket, you could roll into the river. Ricky wants that one back. And Calvin doing a bit of a momentum change here. There we Draining go. Draining a big putt, watching everybody else take yep. the pars. He's going to take the box. Doing what he needs to do. I love Emerson's putt where it's like kind of the rocking motion, the back and forth. He puts his weight on the back, his back foot, and then pushes off and brings that momentum into his uh, upper body. It's a very unique form, but uh, it definitely works. It works well for the wind. Oh, yeah. I realize now Calvin already had the box. Well, now he still has the box. It's pretty impressive but stuff. Takes the lone birdie, gets himself into second on the card. We do have some other players charging from Chase and third card. The lead, three strokes with ten holes to play. Yeah, it is cut in half with still a bit over half to go. Hole nine, 385 feet. Very straightforward. Um, 
get your discs to move forward 360 feet and then turn right for 20 feet and you're gonna have a tap in yeah that's the plan a lot of forehand flex shots a lot of uh, backhand turnover shots um, just get yourself up in position and the green is actually pretty approachable as far as the putt is concerned there is a risk of rollaways but uh, just give yourself a putt and uh, do your best you you've got about 50 feet or so from uh, the trees on the left side to the trees on the right side so a bit of room to shape a shot but with the distance looks like Calvin's gonna go with that fairway turnover oh, that wind took it a, took it a little bit I gotta give a, I know we're talking about the lead card here, but Bradley Williams had one of the coolest shots. He, uh, it might have been a bit of a misrelease, but he hit the ground 50 feet off the tee pad with a sidearm and parked it. So, nice, the headwind can help play into that for sure. Yep, nice looking shot from Ricky there. Yeah, it comes up just in front of that last tree, skips past it, he'll be around circle's edge. Dickerson looking to have a fairway in his hand. Rips it down the middle with a slight turn. Oh, and here we go. Ooh, didn't help him. Man, catches that last tree and went from being inside 15 feet to probably about 40 feet or so now. But that's still in his range. Oh, yeah. Emerson with the nice hyzer flip stand up. Doesn't quite get as much left on it as he needed to, yeah. but gets past those trees and he'll have a clean look from just outside the circle. He wanted a bit more turn than he got. Look at that wind. Yeah, it's hard to tell whether it's going to do much to your disc on this one or not. Coming over the top of that hill, is it staying up there? Is it flowing down? And Chris just floats it in there. Not something you see often with a ripping headwind. What? That's so much control. That was the best putt I've seen from him this entire tournament. That was incredible. His knowledge of the wind, the knowledge of the stability of his disc. Look at the look at that. Look at it lifting. He put up, up, just up, up, the up, up, right up. speed on that. Oh, wow. That is amazing. That's just amazing. There's nothing else to say about that. That is just perfection. It's beautiful. Please go watch that three or four more times. Man, all right. On to Calvin with about a 40 footer. Somewhat of a death putt, you got the, oh man. Just a bit low, waiting for that lift. And Emerson. That's gotta be hard to watch on that card if you're just. Same, just a bit low. You have closer putts and you just see Chris Dickerson do that. He's just a wind wizard. So Ricky is gonna end up missing left side. Two holes in a row now. We have had first putt hit, next putt's not. There's, a, there's some big putts happening right now. These guys are getting big putted hard. And this wind has a lot to do with it. They are not missing easy putts, still difficult. Yeah. I mean, that putt was incredible. Wow. And um, that's a way to try to turn it back around. He yeah. hasn't had the greatest start, not doing terrible but yeah. definitely needs to get moving if he'd like to secure this win. That was a huge momentum shift, shift yeah, for Chris. Yeah, gets back to four strokes now. So even even after a couple bogeys on the front, he's still maintaining a solid lead with nine holes to play. Yeah, a lot, a lot of holes to play, but uh, Chris is looking to play it safe, get a couple more birdies, and get that win. Yeah, attackable back nine. We look forward to seeing you guys out there.